This week I want to show you how to crochet a baby hat. It looks like this and we call it a devil hat. Let's do this. Okay, so when I say devil hat, please don't be disappointed, but I don't mean this one. Um, instead, I actually mean one of these. It's very common in Scandinavia to see these on children. I don't know if it is in the rest of the world, but it is here. What you normally do is you do a flat pattern and then you sew it together like this. It's not the way we are going to do it, but that's how you would sometimes do it. You can do any sort of trimming you want. Uh, it can look different, but what makes it a devil hat is the pointy parts at the <laughs> at the front. You can do it in any type of style you want, but in this I'm going to show you the start, the sides, the points, and also how I am doing some of the trim. I am using acrylic yarn for both the hats and the trim, and I'm using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and some yarn markers. You don't have to use the markers if you don't want to, but I find them really helpful in making this hat symmetrical. To start, make a slip knot by making a loop and pulling a piece of yarn through it, like this. And now make two, chain two. <laughs> By fetching the yarn, yarn over and pull through the loop, yarn over and pull through. Now we're going to make six single crochet in the first stitch. Not into the slip knot, but into the first stitch. This is going to act a little bit like a magic loop, even though it really isn't a magic loop. So here are three and four and five and the last one. Now you can adjust the size of the hole by pulling on the on the thread like this. Now we're going to do a slip stitch in order to complete the round. The problem most people run into is that they make this this slip stitch and then when they come back to it they think it's a stitch. And there's nothing wrong with that. It is a pretty big stitch and it really does look like a completed stitch especially on this first round and the couple the the first couple of rounds. So this stitch is going to be the slip stitch and you cannot work a single crochet into it when you come back to it. Most beginners will see it as a stitch and work a stitch into it and you will see why when we come back to the beginning. But if you have this problem, place some sort of marker in this stitch so that you can remember that this you're not supposed to work this when you come back to it. If you do work it, you're going to get too many stitches. And the round we're going to make now is not going to lay flat. It's going to buckle and do all sort of uh, cool mathematical hyperbolic stuff, but we, which we don't want. It's really pretty, but we don't want it for this because it's going to make the, um, the shaping of this really weird. So to continue, just work two single crochet in each stitch. This counts as, as zero single crochet and then increase. In the following rounds, we are going to do one single crochet, increase, two single crochet, increase, and so on. So we're going to do a repeat for the entire round. And in this one, it is single, <laughs> zero single crochet, and then an increase. And an increase is just two single crochet worked into the same stitch. So here I am, back at the beginning, and now you can probably see why so many make this mistake of working into the last stitch. And it because it's it's um, not only because the stitch is really big. I'm just readjusting the hole here again. It's, it's just getting too big. Just need to pull that <laughs> to close it. But as you see here in the moment when I'm going to remove this marker, the hole that is between the last stitch and the first stitch on this round is actually quite lost. The gap between those two stitches looks as if it's too big to be closed by a normal slip stitch. But when we work the slip stitch, we'll see that it's actually, it, it really isn't. So if you have the correct number of stitches here, you might see it buckle a little bit, but you can work the yarn back and forth in order to, to make it flat. And it's just because you're working a little bit too uh, tightly. At least that's that's my problem. <laughs> um, but if you have too many stitches, it's not gonna lay flat 
if you have the correct number of stitches, you can work it and it will lay flat. If you have too, too uh, little, then it will be pointy. And of course, if you want it to be pointy, just make <laughs> less stitches. But in this one, we just want it to lay flat. So as I said, the next round is going to be one single crochet and then we're going to increase. So start in the first stitch that you're in right now. Do one single crochet and increase in the next by making two single crochet in the same stitch. So as you may see here, we are always counting to six because there are six wedges, if you will, on this on this round, we're going to have six segments and in each segment right now, you're working one single crochet and increase. And to continue, I actually put a yarn marker in each uh, stitch where I increased. This allows me to work the pattern and not have to count as much. <laughs> I just have to work each segment according to the pattern. And if you want, you can count, that's completely fine. But for me, this just makes it easier to explain what I'm doing and it makes it easier to make it symmetrical. So now we're going to figure out the sizing. So I'm making this for a baby of six months old. But if you want it bigger, of course, make it bigger. In this instance, I have, oh, it's 13 centimeters, but I should perhaps get it in, in inches for you. You're going to work it till it's about five inches. And for me, that's, uh, that came out to segments where I have 12 single crochet in each, meaning that I have six segments of 12 single crochet. That's 84, I think. So this is what that looks like with the yarn markers on it. I have my um, purple yarn marker where I'm starting the round, but this is what I mean if, you <laughs> if you're confused. I'm starting here and then I'm working around. After the first segment, I'm going to increase. After the next, I'm going to decrease. Then I'm going to work over two, increase, uh, decrease, and then over the next and increase. And then as you saw, I'm going to also decrease at the beginning of the round. So at the purple yarn marker, I'm also going to decrease. So as you can see here, I'm working 12 single crochet or I am working over the first segment. And after that, I am going to increase in the first yarn marker. And we're not going to increase in the way that I just explained to you to do it. We're actually going to increase by making two, uh, it's English, <laughs> I'm going to chain two and then make a single crochet in the next one. In Danish you would make two chain. <laughs> so I, I, keep, I keep starting that sentence and then realizing that it's wrong, you're going to chain two. <laughs> Now work over the next segment and we're going to decrease when we get to the next yarn marker. So here we are. So just work two single crochet together and then move on. Now what this is going to be is the, the two blue yarn markers in the back are going to be where the pointy things for the ears are going to be, the ear flaps. And the yarn marker I'm going to now is going to be the front uh, pointy thing. But we're not going to work it as of yet, because we don't want it to be too long. So just work across it, just do a single crochet in each across it.
So when we get to the next, we are of course working this symmetrical. So uh, everything we did in the beginning of this round, we also need to do at the other side of the round. So in the next yarn marker, we are going to decrease. And then we're going to work one single crochet across all of this segment too, and then do the thing by with chaining two at the last yarn marker too. The last blue one that is. Of course, we're going to uh, decrease across the purple when we get to it. So here we are, chain two, going to the next, and single crochet your way back to the beginning of this round. And if you are counting along with me, you will you will see that I actually have a wrong number at the back of my hat. It's not a problem. Um, I, I made up for it, but I do have 11 at the beginning rather than 12 and it's, I don't know when I lost that stitch, but I did and I didn't want to replace it because I didn't want it to buckle. <laughs> so here we are. This is going to be the point at the beginning, at the, at the front. <laughs> Now when we get back to the chains, do a single crochet, chain two, and then a single crochet inside of that chain. This is going to start our ear flaps. This is going to look like this when you've done it. And it's becoming these holes. And we don't need the yarn marker anymore because now it's it's pretty clear where the ear flap is going to be. Do that for an entire round and when you get back to it, chain two and then start doing half, half double crochet. Yes, that's what it's called. Do half double crochets. And you're going to continue the pattern and in the chain space, just do a half double crochet, chain two and then a half double crochet. And then continue working. You want a half double crochet in the uh, back two segments of the beginning and the back two segments of the end of the round and you want to do single crochet across the front. Now to do the points at the beginning, just when you get to that uh, yarn marker, chain two and then continue with your single crochet. So work single crochet now until the other part where you decreased and then start doing half double crochet again till you get to the to the back. Now to continue, when you've done this for your one round, you are going to start this instead. <laughs> Where you're going to decrease after the first half segment and then do... I'm going to get to that in a minute, but then at the front you need to decrease twice. And you need to also decrease when you get to half of the segment on the other ear flap. And the reason is this. <laughs> You need to now do two half double crochet in the chain space, then chain two and then do two half double crochet. And we need all of those decreases in order for it to, uh, for us to stay at the same, the same stitch count. So do this and then continue doing that in the round and round and round and round until you have something that looks like this. So you can see the ear flaps gets pretty big and the the point at the front is just it's just there. <laughs> now to do the trimming, I actually made some rib stitches at the back. I do that by making half double crochet and I'm doing front post half double crochet and then a normal half double crochet and this this will make it more elastic and it will 
it will look good. <laughs> I am doing that in all of the stitches where I have half double crochet already. So that is going to be in the back 48 stitches, meaning the first two segments and the last two segments of the hat, where I did half double crochet. It's also pretty easy to see because it's all of the stitches that are in the ear flaps. When you get to the point, at least this was what I did, I chained 30 in order to make the the, the string for tying the, the head. And then I did a single crochet back up uh, through the chain. You can do as many as many chain, you can chain as many as you want or as little as you want. Now there's two ways of ending this. You can either do a half double crochet into the chain space or you can do a single crochet into the the half double crochet that you started with. So like this. This is my preferred method because it it it, it minimizes the hole that is going to be there. So continue, 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 continue until you have this. And then what I did is I made a tassel for the a pom pom for the the top of the hat and and sewed that into place. Thank you so so much for watching and I hope to see you again next Friday. <laughs>